Hi, I am Jonathan Rosenfeld, and today I am joined by attorney Deborah Goth. Uh, Deborah is a an attorney who concentrates her practice in the area of nursing home litigation. Uh, and today, in particular, I want to talk with Deb about one of the more common types of nursing home injuries, uh, falls in nursing homes. Deb, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to speak. Deborah, when we're talking about nursing home fall cases, um, they happen fairly frequently, but when in, in the world of your world of litigation, what types of injuries are you seeing related to nursing home falls? Generally, we see um, a lot of fractures. We'll see fractured hips, um, sometimes a fractured neck or a fractured back. We see traumatic brain injuries, often known as a subdural hematoma. And the problem, the, the catastrophic problem that happens with these kinds of injuries is what we would call the downward spiral. Elderly people generally living in nursing homes have other health conditions. So when an elderly person fractures their hip or suffers some sort of traumatic brain injury, it's not an easy, quick recovery for them. And we'll often see sort of a cascade of other problems that add on to that injury and can lead to death or you know, serious injuries beyond what has happened to them in the nursing home with the fractures. So when someone comes to you and says, hey, you know, my mom, my dad uh, had a fall in a nursing home, you know, maybe there was a fracture involved. Um, Obviously, people are contacting you because they're upset about the injury. They're upset about, you know, their loved one's condition and everything. But um, I guess, you know, what differentiates or what makes a, a case viable, a fall case viable? Um, you know, how do you look at those? Right. I mean, we, we live on Earth and on Earth there's gravity. So, you know, we expect falls and we expect falls in nursing homes. But the truth is many, many falls are preventable. Um, nursing homes have an obligation and a duty to know their resident. And so there's sort of two times that we see these falls occurring. The first time is usually when they are new to the facility and they're getting used to the place. They may have a level of dementia. And so they're not comfortable with their surroundings and there's falls can occur. And nursing homes need to anticipate that and consider what safety plan should we put into place as we get to know the resident. The other side of the coin is when the resident's been living there for a long time and they do know the resident and they know their pattern or they should at least be looking to see what their pattern is with respect to falling. So oftentimes residents may fall because they wanna to go to the bathroom or they're trying to get out of bed and get into a wheelchair. And because there's some level of dementia, they may not remember to ask for help. And nursing homes need to know that this is the kind of resident that they have and put together a safety plan to ensure that those residents don't fall down. Those could include toileting the resident every two hours or maybe putting an alarm on them so they know when the resident might be getting up in order to sort of get into action and try to prevent that fall. Because as we spoke about, once the fall happens and an injury like that occurs, there may be no turning around or coming back from that kind of injury. Um. I want to talk with you a little bit about, you know, how you sort of evaluate these cases in terms of, you mentioned the care plan, you know, nursing homes are required to create this individualized care plan for each resident. Um, what exactly, what are some of the safeguards, I guess, that facilities can uh, implement to sort of prevent these falls from occurring in the first place? Sure. So nursing homes are aware of the fact that the residents might fall. And they have all sorts of policies and procedures in place to individualize the care plan to make sure that they, one, know their resident, two, know what their resident is doing that might lead them to fall, and three, implement interventions to make sure they don't fall or hurt themselves. And I think the interventions is sort of what you're asking me about. And those kinds of interventions can be putting an alarm on a resident so that when they get up, or try to get up the alarm sounds and the nurse or an aide will know to get into action and get to that uh, resident to try to prevent them from falling. They may put together what's called a toileting schedule where they will take the resident to the bathroom every two hours or less so that they're not trying to get up and 
get to the bathroom themselves without asking for help. Um, they may lower the mattress to closer to the floor. So if a resident doesn't remember to ask for help because they have some level of dementia, they, um, if they do fall, they're not falling as far. They may put mats on the floors so that if they do fall, they don't, you know, hopefully there'll be a cushion there to prevent any kind of fracture. Those are the kinds of interventions. There's others that can happen, but those are very common ones. And, you know, I, I think one of the, the issues that comes up a lot of times in these cases is, you know, it's not the, the first fall uh, that causes the, the injury. You know, a lot of times there's uh, a series of events, a series of falls where there's a pattern of, you know, uh, a resident falling, maybe, you know, needing assistance. And a lot of times these facilities are just doing a poor job um, registering, you know, and monitoring these patients as they, you know, continually have uh, issues with this. So um, is that something that you see a lot? Do you see these patterns of falls in some of these cases? We do. And we see them in the majority of our cases. You know, nursing homes can put together great policies and procedures, and they may say things like track the falls and know why they're happening. But if they're not implementing the policies, then there really is, it's not going anywhere for them for the safety of the patient. What they need to be doing is every time the patient falls, do an investigation as to why that patient fell. See if there's a pattern of why they're falling. For example, they may be trying to go to the bathroom without asking for help or they may try to get out of their bed to get into their wheelchair without asking for help. And when I say without asking for help, uh, oftentimes residents have some level of dementia, so they don't remember to ask for help. And so if the nursing home is adequately tracking what's causing the uh, patient to get up and fall, they'll be in a better position to individualize the care plan to put together the right interventions to make sure that they're there to intervene before the fall occurs. And, and when you're as an attorney, when you're evaluating these cases, um, I assume that you look at the, the care plan, uh, the, the safeguards that were supposed to be in place versus you know, what actually may have happened at the time of the fall. Is that correct? Well, we're looking at both, right? We're yeah. looking to see what was the plan that was supposed to be implemented. Was the plan adequate and matching what the resident was doing, meaning did they have the right interventions in place? And then were they in fact using the interventions to try to prevent the fall? Nine times out of 10, there's something amiss there. Uh, either they didn't have the right interventions in place or they weren't tracking regularly to see uh, why the resident was falling in the way they were, or they hadn't implemented the interventions, which is actually, in my opinion, the most common that they, they come up with these great plans, but then they don't actually implement them. So they look good on paper, but they don't help the resident at all. Uh, I, I, I see that as well. It's, it's tough. A lot of times these facilities are, are drastically understaffed. Um, Deb, ultimately these cases, you know, like all cases in the world of personal injury, it all comes down to, to sort of to dollars and cents. Um, and, and a lot of times, you know, I've had families come to me and say, Hey, you know, I have a, a family member who may have been injured, um, at a nursing home, but I, I, you know, they're old. I don't know if there's, if it's really a viable case to, to pursue. Um, but can you talk a little bit about the damages in, uh, you know, nursing home cases, a lot, of, you know, nursing home fall cases, how you evaluate these cases and really, you know, how you translate that into uh, uh, ultimately a, a recovery for a family. Uh, sure. Yes. I think it's a great question because this is where using an, an, an attorney that has experience in nursing home litigation is critical. Uh, you're right in that this is not your typical plaintiff. You're dealing with uh, elderly people generally or incapacitated people, they're not earning anymore. And um, it, the case itself has to be presented in a certain kind of way. On top of it, you have a very highly regulated industry. And these regulations are critical to your case. You wanna be able to show that there are all these regulations in place to protect these very vulnerable people and that these regulations are not being followed um, and instituted properly. In, in that way, we want to eventually and ultimately be able to show that just because you're old or just because you can't work anymore, that you matter, 
and that your life mattered and that what happened to you mattered. So nursing home residents in, are able to recover in, in really three different ways. The first is what we call compensatory damages. And that is meant to compensate you for the, or the resident for the injuries they sustained and the pain and suffering that they went through. It's important to note that if your loved one has passed away, those compensatory damages still exist. They are still able to compensate that person even though they're no longer with us. Their pain and suffering still matters. The second kind of uh, damages that one can recover would be what we call wrongful death damages. And those are really meant to compensate for loss of services, guidance and support to loved ones that were still receiving those kinds of services from their loved one if they were able to give them. And then the third kind of damages you can obtain are called punitive damages. And those are really reserved for the most reckless cases, the worst kind of conduct that we see in nursing homes. And those are used to really punish the facility and try to deter them from acting in such a reckless and uh, awful way again and hurting residents in the future. You know, I, I think one of the, you know, ancillary things that comes up with some of these cases is a lot of times, you know, you know, mon money aside, monetary damages aside, a lot of times these facilities, they do begin to make some changes um, when they see you know, a pattern of these payouts, you know, ultimately, you know, when these facilities start seeing that they're, you know, it's hitting them in the pocketbook, they st start making some changes and it really does help, you know, care for other residents. So, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, if, if you're sort of on the fence about bringing a case, there's multiple reasons. It's not just about, you know, a monetary recovery. There are other benefits in terms of moving forward. Um, Deb, I really appreciate your, your insight today. It was great. Uh, and I look forward to talking you, with you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. 